back to it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dreadbread. Let's go. Oh, um, whoa. Uh, I should have mentioned this real quick. If you're new and you're hopping in, I do have to mute this stuff because when I do post it over on the YouTubes, they do ID claim the music in it. So it looks like we have some mercenaries, maybe? Another kill team. Alrighty, we've got... Woo. We've got some gross mutated humans from the uh, Gene Stealer cults. Gross. That guy there is kind of gross looking. Plain. Ah, yes, big brain man there. That's. I like that model. I don't. I'm not going to lie. I like that model. Some gross tyranids. The cult wants you. No, thank you. Oh, and then we've got some dwarves in leather jackets. All right. That one I don't care for because it's the weird robot one. And the, just the proportions look funny. Maybe it's just the way that's painted, but already. Okay. The heads look extremely small. I do like that one. I do like all the gizmos and gadgets on that one. We've got a sniper. Alright. Oh, that guy's got... And there's some gas mask uh, imperial troopers that would very much like that, sir. You might have to hand that over. Alright. Fortune favors, favors the bold. So you get a Mangus, a Primark, and a Brood Brother Sniper. Okay. And then you get Jaeger Bombast, Jaeger Theon, and Jaeger Riflelin. Okay. Ready? Beware of the shadows. So there we go, the new... I will say this, I do like the um, Necromunda squats a whole lot better than the squats that we actually got. Um, these guys are okay. These guys are just okay. The kill team battle box is on its way. It's called Termination. And we've got Tom and Elliot from the Warhammer Studio to tell us all about it. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for joining us. So, first of all, let's have a look at what we're dealing with. Okay. These guys are pretty awesome. It's set on Beta Decima by the look of it. Can you tell us about how the story's evolved since last time? Mm. So you could say Beta Decima has had a bit of a tough time recently <laughs> with the uh, the Gallo Dark event. The Gene Stealer Cult have taken over the whole planet. They've got orbital defense platforms and military bases uh -oh. in the, the capital city and things like that. And so the Jaegers are part of a larger fleet that is actually shadowing a Tyranid high fleet. And they have been following this Tyranid High Fleet as it's been absorbing the biomatter of planet oh, after planet. Good. So they're allowing it to fatten up, mm, fill the delicious advanced biomaterials and things like that. So they're waiting for the perfect time to ambush this High Fleet in a, in a giant space battle. And so the Jaegers have been sent out in a scouting ship to see where they're going and to make sure that there's a whole area of space where the Leagues of Earth can get to work without being interrupted by anybody else. Unfortunately, they fly... Uh, close to Beta Decima that seems to have, uh, you know, gone through some, some tough times. <laughs> and uh, they are engaged by uh, Gene Stealer controlled orbital defense weapons that managed to take them by surprise and shoot their ship down. So That's the uh, Jaegers find themselves crash landed and massively outnumbered by the Gene Stealer cult. So the Gene Stealer cult deployed there. That's a neat model. I, I wish they had a different name than Jaeger. Because when I think of Jaeger, I think that alcoholic drink. Not really Space Dwarf. That looks familiar. That looks like kind of like something kids used to draw back in the day. An S. Brood Brother Kill Team to uh, make an example of these interlopers. So in terms of the Leagues of Votan, uh, the Hernkin, we've only seen them as the pioneers riding around on their cool Magda Core bikes, right? Um, what are the Hunkin Jaegers and how do they actually play in Kill Team? So they're a brand new unit for the Leagues of Votan. Uh, like you said Sniper before, boy. the Hernkin we've seen are the pioneers, um, who are the ones on the bikes. Uh, these are the Jaegers. So they're still part of the Hernkin, but they have a slight. I do like these weapons. I'm not going to lie. I like the revolve giant revolver 
blast your shotgun things. A different role. Uh, now the Hernkin's primary role is the scout. They're the advanced party of the leagues of Votan, if you like. So they range ahead of the rest of the flea and the rest of the forces. They will identify locations of importance and drop markers or beacons or relay mm. the information back, uh, back to the rest of their kin. Uh, but sometimes they'll need to leave a presence there. And that's where the Jaegers come in. Uh, so the Jaegers are an incredibly self-sufficient uh, commando unit, if you like. Oh, and they'll get deployed at locations that are by identified by the Hernkin. Uh, and then they'll conduct acts of sabotage, assassination, disruption uh, for extended periods on their own with, with very little support or reinforcement. Um, so when the rest of the, their kin arrive, they're effectively mopping up all the great work that all the... Uh, or the Jaegers have done, whilst they, they take it easy back on the ship, I suppose. Um, but yeah, they're, they're really, really self-sufficient and, and conduct sort of guerrilla warfare type battles. Um, that's, that's their purpose. In the game, they have some, a, lot of, a lot of unique rules. It's a sort of a hybrid between extremely elite and more than more numerous teams to sort of sit in the middle. Um, one of the first things they do is they like to control the board. Uh, okay. So they've, they've, they've set up their traps and their positions early, ready to ambush people. And so they have some funky ways of doing that. First of all, you can set them up further into the kill zone and, and get that early board, board space and make that yours. Uh, they also have a load of mines you can litter around the battlefield so that uh, you're really forcing your opponent to move specifically or otherwise take the damage uh, from those mines, which is fun. Um, and then they also have um, something quite unique called resourceful points um, because they're very, very self-sufficient and, and flexible and adaptable, if you like. Uh, they can generate these points. They can, you can then spend them to either uh, heal some wounds if you start to lose some wounds but you can also add one to their APL to do more actions, that kind of thing. That's always um, nasty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really useful. And so they're pretty much scouts with big guns and lots of sneaky traps in the, that go boom. Especially because it's reactive, Aye. so I can, can keep these points so in bear traps. They're not bear at traps. the moment I need to, which is unlike a lot of other uh, APR rules where you normally have to set it up and it's a bit more telegraphed. Mm. Uh, this is a little more reactive, which is quite nice. Nice. They've also got some... Uh, some really, really funky operatives that, that do some unique things. Um, first, we've got the tracker, who has these that cool goggles and a crossbow like and a throwing axe. Crossbow. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, it gives this operative some, a real, like, woodsman, hunter type, mm. type feel, uh, which is really nice. Uh, you've also got my favorite one, the bombast. Uh, this one has a rule called Rortlock Negotiation, <laughs> uh, which is named after its Rortlock revolvers. Mm. Negotiates Ooh. with the revolvers, of course, which is really cool. Um, and that allows this operative to very, very start the turning point, get some shots in before anyone else, which is really, really fun. So uh, you've got a magna coil rifle from your sniper. Um, and so, so overall, they're, they're a, a really, really fun team that likes to fight on their terms. Like I said, whether that's mm. they've set up the board for themselves and force you to go specific ways. And then fight in a real guerrilla play style. Um, so okay, as, long as, okay. as long as they're controlling the, the narrative and they're in control of the game, that's when they're going to shine the best. So, uh, um, so yeah, they're a really, really fun team. There's that guy again. There's that guy. He's about to eat that dude. I really don't like the tactical hands or the pointing. They they need to the figure they need to figure something else out. They just do. Team. So onto the Brood Brothers themselves. Now uh, they're a quite a, a sub faction of the mm, Dealer cults mm. themselves. Uh, for those who don't know about it, would you like to uh, explain more about what the Brood Brothers are? Yeah, so the Brood Brothers are um, uh, Astra Militarum Imperial Guard that have uh, oh. been, you know, brought onto the side of the Gene Steeler cult. I like that a lot. They really, really need to start doing like Chaos Traitor, uh, imp Imperial uh, God, <sighs> Chaos Traitor Imperial Guard, and that'd be really cool to see. Also, Infected Imperial Guard too, for gene stealers that's really cool i like that they are there normally waiting and hiding within loyalist regiments they can sometimes be we've talked about in the background of, of this book where they can sometimes be the most effective squad uh, of an imperial guard platoon for example and the commander loves them until the day of revolution happens and then they turn on uh -oh. their on their uh, sort of loyalist uh, companions for um, our um, this particular brood uh, brood brother squad that we want to capture here is the most elite version of a brood brothers they are veteran guardsmen who have fought in many campaigns Ooh. who have either been gene stealers all along and been in hiding or they've or they've been turned to the side of the gene stealers so they have tons of combat experience they use lots of special weapons that the imperial guard use and things like that and they are the bodyguard squad for the brood coven so they protect the highest leaders i don't like that face <clears throat> excuse me my voice cracked i something's going on 
something's going on. You can tell. He's not happy. Maybe, uh, maybe he had a different idea, and they told him no. But that dude, not a happy camper right now. Of the uh, Gene Steeler cult during, you know, the dangerous points of a revolution. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, shall we deal with the uh, four-armed elephant in the room? The patriarch. That's going to be in the Brood Brothers. Kill team, is it? Big old brain boy, man. There he is. There's that. That's really, really cool. I like that. I like that they did this chat. But that's a terrifying mm. notion. I'm kind of morbidly interested, yet you know, really intimidated to find out more about it. <laughs> They're the scariest operative to date, for sure. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we've we've uh, had a lot of fun with, with this operative. Uh, it's quite costly. It costs you numerous other operatives if you want to take them. So uh, okay. so so effectively, you're going to have a choice each game whether to take the patriarch or or one of the other ones, which we'll talk about later. Double activation, they can activate twice. Really, really? fun. Uh, they can even mind control the opponent's operatives, <laughs> which is to make them do actions, which is yeah. just really, really cool. So it's uh, a lot of fun, a real all-star of this team, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow, wow. So uh, we've got those, we've got the uh, majors, of course, a full-on dedicated psyche, really, and uh, the, uh, the Primus, who's uh, the tactical mastermind of the Gene Steeler cult. How do they work as well? Yeah, so the Magus is the spiritual leader of the cult, so you have a lot more support rules from that operative. Uh, it's also a very powerful psychic, so you've got some cool psychic very unique cool. actions to do. And then the Primus is the strategic military mastermind. Um, of the so we have seen that model before, and I believe we have seen this model before. I could be wrong about him, though, but I do feel like we've seen that before. But I, I know we've seen that before. I take that back. The cult. Um, so that's going to give you... Uh, 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 extra CP, uh, influence over initiative, which is which is really important, mm. and they're also a good fighter to boot as well. But between those three opties, you've actually got quite a lot of flexibility on on how you want to play them, depending mm. on what your opponent's playing, that kind of thing. Um, and then, and like Tom was saying before, they're they're also an elite veteran veteran guardsman squad, effectively. So if you don't want to play with the with with one of the brew coven and you just want to take uh, extra operatives, they're more than worth doing as well because they have lots of really funky uh, interaction rules between them which makes this team quite a flex team you can mm. really change how you want to play them depending on, on on what you want for that game so uh, what exactly do we have in the box then uh, so in in the box uh, you get uh, these two new pieces of terrain uh, all the other terrain here is from the killzone beta decima mm -hmm. stuff that you can so you only get these two bits chat only those all that all this other stuff comes separate in a different box set because they want you to buy more. Get separately. Uh, then you've got uh, both of the teams. Uh, there's quite a lot of models in here because we've added the Brood Coven as well. So mm. in terms of models, it's one of the sort of heftiest model uh, amounts that you get in a kill team box. You also then get card packs for each of the teams with data cards, with equipment cards, all the sort of stuff you've seen in Salvation for the for the Scouts and the, and the Scorpions. And then also... Again, with this face, he either doesn't want to be there or he's ticked off about something about this but i don't know i don't know which one it is i don't know which one it is chat so a book with all of your missions your background uh, team rules in there as well token sheets for both the teams so the uh... it's kind of like a mix of he doesn't want to be there i, I i'm gonna keep saying this it's, it's like he doesn't want to be there because he's heard this all the, all this stuff before or he's not happy with this because something didn't go the way he wanted i i, I don't know uh, i don't know what the yet. jaegers get their minefield tokens which have blank sides as well so you don't know which ones are yeah. real which ones aren't so basically all of all of the you know the best rules reference and stuff we wanted to make sure people kind of get not because that right there is a fake smile that that just the book, everything is. they could want in this box well that is kill team termination Thanks again for joining us, Tom and Elliot, and letting us know all about it. Sounds super cool. Can't wait for it. Keep your eyes out. It's coming soon. But before you go, we've got even more stuff on its way, so stick around. Anyway, chat, that's going to be the end of that one. I'm not ending the VOD, uh, the twi blah, 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 blah. I'm not ending the stream, just the VOD. So the people over on YouTube, by the 